The next section we're going to cover specifically is on quadratic functions. We have already dealt with quadratic functions a little bit during chapter two, um, but we are now going to get them up directly. Some of this will be review. Um, we're breaking up section 3.1 into two parts. This first part is going to be about quadratic functions in standard form. And then those that are in factored form, or I call it intercept form. So first thing, let's define what a quadratic function looks like in standard form. Um, a quadratic function in standard form is anything that looks like f of x, or you could put y here, equals ax squared plus bx plus c, where a, b, and c are any real number, and a is not equal to zero. If a was zero, the first term would disappear, and I'd have bx plus c, and that would be a linear function. We call a the leading coefficient, A gives us the steepness of the graph. If um, A is equal to 1, we get our parent function. And the last lesson, I added the videos of the graphs of the parent functions. If A is um, I'm going to put the absolute value of A is bigger than 1. Um, our graph is has a vertical stretch. With a scale factor of the absolute value of A. <laughs> Think about it in terms of slope, like on a linear equation. Your slope is bigger than 1, the graph gets steeper. Um, I'm going to use my pin here. So linear equation, normally a 45 degree angle. If the slope is bigger than one, it gets steeper. There's the slope of one again. If the slope is between zero and one, it gets flatter. Okay. If zero is less than the absolute value of A, which is less than one, i.e. we have a fraction between zero and one, we call our graph has a vertical compression. the scale factor of the absolute value of A. And from our last lesson, if A is less than zero, i.e. it is negative, we have a reflection across the y-axis, I mean x-axis. And, um, some people call this a vertical reflection. So A is your leading coefficient, and that's the information that A gives you. C is called the constant term. And C also gives you the y-intercept of the graph. Gives you the y-coordinate of the y-intercept for the graph. Because you find a y-intercept by putting zero in for your x's. And if I put zero in for every x, these first two terms would disappear. And then I would be left with just C. And that is the y-intercept of the graph. Let me go back to the A really quick. When I go to graph it, I'm going to use that A to um, come up with points once I have the vertex. Once I know where the vertex is, let's just, I'm going to remind you, x, x squared. Um, I'm going to 
those are the five X's that I put in for my parent graph, and I have four, one, zero, one, four. So um, from the vertex, I'm going one to the left and one to the right of the vertex. And then my graph ended up going up one from the vertex. Then when I go two to the left and two to the right from the vertex, I went up four from the vertex. And I use this A that when I'm gonna go left and right one, I'm gonna go up or down one times A. That's because of that one. Then if I go left or right two from the vertex, I'm gonna go up or down four times A. And that is because of these fours here. Notice my parent function has an A of one. The reason why I have down is if A is negative, my graph is gonna go down from the vertex. My A is positive, I go up from the vertex. So that's how you use the A and the C on standard form. What we need to do is we need to be able to find the vertex of the graph. I'm going to rewrite the standard form out. Standard form, again, is f of x equals a x squared plus b x plus c. The first thing that we can do after the points we know like the y-intercept and what a does, we need the, the vertex. Well, we can actually find the equation for the line of symmetry. And the equation for the line of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. That gives us the vertical line that's right in the middle of my parabola. Well, the vertex um, x-coordinate is that negative b over 2a. So the way I would write this is vertex x is equal to negative b over 2a. The vertex y coordinate is just putting that value back into my original equation. Wherever there's an x, put parentheses and then stick that value in, in the parentheses. Okay, that gives your vertex x, that gives your vertex y, you have your line of symmetry, and then you can use that over one, up one, over two, up four, or over um, one, up or down a, and then over two, up or down four a. So let's do the example that they have in, the, um, in your book. So I work it out step by step. And put a little graph out here. And the example they have is 1.7b. And it says graph the equation y equals negative x minus uh, negative x squared minus 4x plus 3. So the way I'm going to go about graphing this is the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find my line of symmetry. And that is x equals negative b over 2a. Or it's the opposite of b. So it's going to be the opposite of negative 4, which is 4, over 2 times negative 1, which is negative 2. So I get negative 2 for my line of symmetry. So there is my negative 2. Got my line of symmetry there. 
Um, now I'm going to find my Y coordinate of the vertex. Line of symmetry and my vertex X are the same there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put negative 2 in 4X. I'm going to put parentheses here. Anytime I'm going to substitute a value into a function, I always put parentheses where the X was, and then I put the number I'm substituting. In this case, is negative 2. And I do that so I don't mess up when I'm doing order of operations. So I end up with a negative. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Negative 4 times negative 2 is positive 8 plus 3. 8 minus 4 is 4. 4 plus 3 is 7. So I have the point negative 2 comma 7. So negative 2, 7, 2, 4, 6, 7. From here, I'm going to go left and right, 1, down 1. Then I'm going to go left and right, 2, down 4. So I'm going to go over 1, down 1, over 2, down 4. Then I'm going to use symmetry, over 1, down 1 over two, down four. Then smooth curve, and I have the graph. One thing I'm gonna check is right here, my y-intercept is in fact three. Another thing I could have done is I could have plotted the vertex, I could have plotted the y-intercept, used symmetry to come up with that point, and then just gone over one down. I need five points. Um, I need the vertex. Then I need two on each arm. When you are graphing a quadratic form. Okay. Next form we're going to talk about is um, factored form. Call it intercept form because it actually gives me my intercepts. Okay. It is anything that looks like this. f of x equals a times x minus x1. I'm going to actually, I'm going to write it the way the book does, and I'm going to write it the way um, I'll write it a slightly different way. Um, that way you don't have all these X's in it. This is the way that we wrote it last year in Algebra 2. Okay, um, we're gonna say that X1, we're gonna say A, X1, X2, P, and Q are real numbers. Um, a cannot be equal to zero because that would make the whole thing zero. Here, um, P comma zero and Q comma zero are X intercepts. Or if you're using the top form, X one comma zero x2 comma 0. Notice the negative signs here. So the numbers that are my x-intercepts are the opposites of the numbers that are in the factored form. And we see that. Um, I'm going to write x minus 2 and x plus 3. If I were to solve this from our previous work, I would go x minus 2 equals 0 x plus 3 equals 0, and I get x is equal to 2, 
x is equal to negative 3. Okay, so you see that, hey, when I have a minus 2 here, the actual intercept is a positive 2. When I have the plus 3, my x-intercept is the negative 3. So that's a big thing to remember is that these are the opposite. Now, one thing I want to tell you is that um, when we did some factoring in the last chapters, we had sometimes we had numbers in front of these x's. Well, 2x plus 3, and then let's do x minus 4. Well, that doesn't look like the form that's up there. Well, I can make it that form. If I have a number in front of the x, I'm going to pull that number out in front. I'm going to pull a 2 out in front by dividing everything in here by 2. This would be 2, and then I'd have an x plus 3 halves times x minus 4. So to use the over 1 up a, over 2 up 4a, you can have no coefficients in front of the things in parentheses. You actually have to factor them out so you get your a term. Okay. So right off the bat, I get my intercepts, my x-intercepts from factored form. I just said each factor equal to 0. Or it's going to be the opposite of whatever this number is, is one intercept. The opposite of whatever that, that number is, is my other intercept. The other thing I can get quite rapidly from that is the equation for the line of symmetry, which is um, take your two intercepts and divide it by two. The line of symmetry, you add up your x-intercepts and divide by 2. It's in the middle of the two x-intercepts. So my actual vertex is going to be at p plus q over 2. Then I'm going to take that number, stick it into my original function, and that will be my vertex. Okay. From there, um, you have three points on your graph, and then you can use the A to go over 1, up or down A, over 2, up or down 4A, depending upon. I would just do the over 1 unless that happened to be your intercepts. So to finish us off here, I'm going to do example. Um, I'm going to graph example 3.1. 3.1 told us to turn it into standard form. Um, I'm going to look at your homework in just a minute and see if you have any of those in the homework. But I actually want to graph the following. f of x equals negative 3, x plus 1, x plus 4. Okay, so first thing I know is um, I'm actually going to draw some axes here because I don't think my stamp is going to be big enough. I can tell you right now, I've got to be able to go down to negative 12 if I want to do um, my y-intercept. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do my x-intercepts at negative 1. and at negative 4. Okay, so I have x-intercepts at negative 1 and negative 4. My line of symmetry is at negative 1 minus 4 over 2, which is negative 5 halves, which is negative 2 and a half, right in the middle. Um, I need five points on this graph. I'm going to plot the y-intercept next. My y-intercept, one in green, is going to be negative 3 
times 1 times 4. And negative 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. I'm going to use symmetry to plot this dot at negative 12. So now what I need to do is I need to put that negative 5 halves into my original equation. So I have y, or f of x, is equal to negative 3 times 1 minus 5 halves. Um, I put the 1 first and then the minus 5 halves, and then 4 minus 5 halves. 1 minus 2 and a half is negative 1 and a half, so that would be negative 3 halves. 4 minus 1 and a half. Uh, two and, 4 minus 2 and a half is 1 and a half, which is 3 halves. If you do the math correctly, when you put in the um, line of symmetry, these two numbers have to be opposites of each other. If you did it correctly, those two numbers will always be opposites, opposites of each other. That's a way to check your work. And now what I'm going to do is multiply everything out. A negative times a negative times a positive is a positive. And then 3 cubed is 27. 2 times 2 is 4. 27 fourths, which is um, 6 and 3 quarters. So that's where my vertex is. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. There's my vertex. And then I connect them with a smooth curve. So that is graphing them in two different forms. I'm going to go to look at your homework. Your homework is homework number 15. I'm going to write this down. I'm going to put it in Google Classroom also, also on that check sheet that you have. So you are doing for homework 15. We're doing section 3.1, um, 1, 2A, 2B, 3, 4C, 5, 6, 7, and 8. Okay. So question one is it has you putting things into standard form. So I have not done examples like your question one. So I'm going to do some of those like that. So I want to put the following in standard form. I'm going to do one from factored form. I am going to do one from vertex form, which we are going to do. Um, we're going to talk about how to graph vertex form for our next lesson. Okay, so I want to put both of these in standard form. First thing we want to do here is we want to multiply those two out. I'm going to have x squared. 3 minus 2 is 1x minus 6. And then I distribute the 1 half. And I'm done. For the one on the right, first thing you want to do is square that. To keep the two. First term squared, two times the product would be minus 6x plus 9 plus 4. Distribute the two into the parentheses. So I have 2x squared minus 12x plus 18 plus 4. And that gives me 2x squared minus 12x plus 22. So that's how you do the problems like problem number one. Um, 
Problem two, you are doing A and C. You're doing A and B. Those are factoring um, things. I'm going to do C for you because you have not factored things when you've had uh, fractions in front of them. So I'm going to do number 2C, which is on your list of try homework, not the turn-in homework. So for 2C, they want us to factor g of x equals 1 half x squared plus 5x plus 9 halves. What I'm going to do to get rid of this 1 half is I am going to pull a 1 half out in front and then I'm going to divide everything by one half. And remember, dividing by one half is the same thing as multiplying by two. I'm going to rewrite this g of x with the one half out in front. Then I'm going to multiply every one of these terms by two. So one half times two is one. Five x times two is ten uh, x. And then the 9 halves times 2 is 9. And now this is something that I can factor. I need two numbers that multiply to 9 that add to 10, which are a positive 9 and a positive 1. Plus 9, x plus 1. So that'll help you out. You want to factor out... Um, any common factor that you can factor out, or if there's a fraction you want to factor out the smallest fraction out of everything, um, and then continue factoring. And make sure you don't have any numbers in front of these x's when you get all done. That number has to be pulled out all the way in front. Your problem three. It says a function can, is quadratic as long as a is not zero, but b or c or both can be zero. Um, so three, you're going to be factoring out greatest common factors. And then four, you are doing a, d, and e. It says determine the x and y intercept, determine the coordinates of the vertex. Like I showed you in class, plot the intercepts, vertex, and one more point. To come up with the graph. So those are graphing from from uh, vertex form. I mean for intercept form. And then five, do the steps in order. Five looks like this to start out with. Do the steps in order. Step A said to put it in standard form. I do not want you using any shortcuts to graph this from last year. I want you to do the steps in order. It says to put it in standard form. So that means you're going to square it out and then combine like terms. Then B tells you to factor it. Um, C tells you to find the coordinates of the vertex. And then D tells you to graph it. We're going to use this for next Monday's lesson um, to talk about this form right here, which is called the vertex form. But for this homework, do those steps in order. Don't use any of the shortcuts from last year. So that's the first half of section 3.1. Um, have fun.